our book real quick. All right, so um, one and two, we didn't have an issue with. Let's talk about number four for some of you. Um, drawing a picture, guys. Because some of you gave me the, the distance, but you didn't give me the coordinate, okay? And that's the problem on number six as well. All right, so we know that. I probably should do it the other way. Let's just fix this. All right, so JK, I'm not kidding. All right, we have a negative 12 to 4. We need to know the distance of JK. JK is a total of 8 units long. JK equals 8. Okay, when I want to show the distance or the length, I don't put the segment up. I just put, write the letters side by side. All right, so if I want to find the coordinate of the midpoint, midpoint I mean, you can guesstimate, there's your midpoint. To be a midpoint, it cuts the segment in half. It's a bisector, okay? So we're going to have two equal segments, two equal parts. Some of you did this. I mean, that's 16, sorry. Yeah, okay. Some of you did this. You did the 16 and a half, and you got 8. But that's not the coordinate of the midpoint. That's the distance, like the length. From here to here is 8. And here to here is 8. From J to M is 8, and from M to K is 8. That's not the coordinate. How do we find the coordinate? You, just, you can just count. We want to move over here 8 units. So if I'm at a negative 12 and I move over 8, that's plus 8, I would end up where? At 4. Sorry, negative 4. Yeah, negative 4. Okay. Now, this problem is like number, similar to number 6, which I want to talk about. We didn't, I didn't see some issues with five. Y'all understand how to set up the midpoint. So again, AB, point C is four-fifths of the distance AB. So you have to find the distance B. Okay? This was eight. All right, there's two ways I can work at this. We know four-fifths of, I can write it like this, of AB, all right? That is red as four-fifths times AB, the length of AB, okay? So I could say four-fifths, yes, times eight, okay? You get a decimal answer when you do that, okay? Because really I'm doing four times eight, which is 32 over five, which gives me 6.4. Okay, again, this is not the coordinate. That's the distance. That's the length of four-fifths of AB. So basically, they want us to go from A and approximately 6.4. Oops. Let see for you. Boom, 6.4. All right, so they want the coordinate of C, meaning if I'm starting at a negative 4. Oops, forgot this one doesn't work. Okay. 2.4. Yeah, I would, all, from here, it's 6, right? And then I need to put whatever. So we will end up okay. There's another way you can do this. You can do a proportion. So four fifths is how much out of the whole, which is eight. Okay. It's always part to whole. So what part out of the whole? Again, you get 5x equals 32 and then you have to divide by 5. Now, some of you did this in your calculator. And I know by 5, or 32 divided by 5, it gives you a fraction. I think someone just asked me, it gives you a fraction answer. Okay, so to get the decimal value, does anyone remember what to do? Yeah, hit control, enter, and it gives you the decimal value. Okay, you got to remember that keystroke. You're going to use that a lot. Okay. All right, now. Running it to 2.4 or 6.4? 2.4. The coordinate. 6.4 is the distance from A to C. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, now I need you to put your workbook up. I need to show you something real quick. Okay, I'm going to post this on a 
Komodo, okay? I'm gonna allow you to uh, try to do it right now in class, but I can tell you on the phone it's kind of hard. You need to do it on the computer. Um, what you have in the red workbook is your interactive journal, your interactive workbook that we're gonna do in class. There will be homework in there, um, but there will also be homework posted on the online book, okay? So if you want to check out a hard copy of the book, you just need to go to the student service window, get out a form, fill it out, turn it into Ms. Johnson, and they'll send the book to you. But where is Ms. Johnson? She is the first hallway, um, 1435, there we go, which is like the first hallway on the left before you get to the cafeteria. I have to every night because I'm back Okay. We'll talk about that. Oh, we've already discussed that a little bit. All right. They didn't have them. We just got them. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you now. We like we literally just got them what, Monday or Tuesday. I, I think they're done coding them. They have to put a code in them. Yeah, so they should be ready to be checked out. Okay, this week. All right. Um, now, um, what I'm going to do with the online book, though, is there's going to be times, and I'm going to do it uh, this weekend, because it's just for me to check that you can access it, is there I will assign homework through the online book. And so when you go to PearsonRealize.com, okay, um, I think I had it up here. Please be up here. Yes. All right. So let me go back. Yes. No, this is it. I'll go back a step. The same thing that we use for Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're... Yeah, I think they it is it? Okay. Like, they're they're yeah, it's the same setup. Okay. All right, so you're going to sign in. All right, you're going to see this. Do not put this in yet. I don't know if it needs to be re-entered if it's, um, if it's, uh, all right, so I want you to click here because you have to put in the district information. So, like, if I, once I click here, it's going to ask, search your district. You're going to have to type in Lamar. When you do, it'll give you a drop-down menu for to, to uh, put Lamar consolidated. So, Oops. When you go right here, there it is. You got to click that and then click go. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't know if it's different than the English one, but the login. Yeah. I think you can enroll in other classes. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when you get here, it's username is LCISD caps, first initial, uh, first name initial, last name first initial, and then your ID number. Okay. And then your user, your password is your district password, like you use to every time you log in. Then it's capital A after your district password, capital A, lowercase a, and then a one. Yeah, this is all going to be on your moto. Yeah. Capital A. No, it's LCISD first. Then, yeah, first, last, then your ID number. So is that different from English? Okay, all right. I'm going to ask about that, yeah. Okay. It should give you all your books. Yeah, um, but I need to check on that. Okay, so, yes, I'm going to put this in a separate post with this link to this, this step to how to log in, and I'm going to put it in the folder, okay? So, pretty much gives you the steps of what you have to put in, and it gives you an example. Are we okay on that? So, what I'm going to do is you need to get on the book. You probably say you have an assignment. It's just going to be five questions, okay? It's not going to be right or wrong. I just need you to click, you know, see if you can answer the problems. You know, they're all multiple choice. And then it'll give me a report that you did it, and then I know that you got on by that, okay? If we do this by an actual person, we just bring it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, for the oh, uh, you put your district password. Then and then it's at the end of your district password is the capital A, lowercase a, and a one. Okay. Okay. 
I need you to look at this packet. What is the course ID? There's no course ID. Then how do I enroll? You, sh you must have enrolled differently. Okay. Put your name on this. This packet will be a grade. We're going to go through the process of how you prove ge geometrically. Um, no, it's not due on Monday. We're going to finish this in class on Monday. Okay. So no homework this weekend. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. First thing. Uh, the first part of this is I'm going to check that you make the correct assumptions. We do not assume in geometry. We have to have markings to prove it, okay? Um, but, the, but we are going to be able to take out relationships just by looking at a figure. So on this first figure, we have a line because we have the arrow, arrow. I can name it line AT or TM or AM as long as I have two points on the line. But we should see a relationship with those points on the line, okay? No, I, I can't assume T is the midpoint. Okay, you're going based on guessing. Okay. T is in between. Yes, I can say it's between A and M, but I don't know. I don't have facts for it to be midpoint. If it's a midpoint, you must see this. Okay. Because that proves that T is a bisector and AT and TM are equal distance. Okay, they're congruent. So just without the tick marks, all I know is T is between. Okay? T is between A and M. And so if T is between them, whenever you see a point between, you're going to use the segment addition postulate. Okay, that's what you can assume. So I can make a conclusion from this figure using that postulate. And I can conclude that AT plus TM is going to equal AM. That is the only thing I can assume from that. Okay. Yeah. No, you physically can see that. Yeah. Yeah, there's one on my desk. All right, so on the next figure. You can do what? I could do, well, not LH. I could do the whole angle. Yeah. I'm hoping you see vertical angles. Because vertical angles are only formed by two lines intersecting, because you physically see the lines intersecting. And I'm hoping you see linear pair. Okay. Linear pair. So if I say vertical angles, the relationship for vertical angles is that they are congruent. So let's talk about two conclusions you can make. You can say that angle CHL is congruent to angle N, NHU, okay? And that's me looking at these two vertical angles, okay? And what I've had people say, which is true, we're saying the same thing. I've heard students say, well, I could also say angle CHN is equal to angle LHU, okay? We're saying the same thing, but there's just a slight technicality between it, okay? Okay? Yeah, one saying congruent, one is equal, but don't they mean the same thing? Okay? The definition of concurrency means that they're equal, okay? But if I was to write equal, I now have to say the measure of the angle is equal. If I just name it, I'm saying congruent, okay? It's just, a, just I know you, I know what you mean, okay? But I'm just telling you that's just a slight difference in the, in the uh, cause you're gonna start seeing statements and you, you'll be able to read it right, okay? Um, I could say if I'm gonna talk about linear pairs, okay? I have angle LHC. That's horrible. Angle LHC plus angle CHN equals 180. Okay, so if I want, because I, I can physically see they form a straight line, I can add the two parts and make it equal to 180. All right, so on this next figure. Yeah, it doesn't have a box, so I don't know it's a right angle. What do we know? What can we see? Mm, I need a box for that. Hmm? 
I, I don't know what the bisector. I would need actually arcs for that, so I can't say that. Oh, it's something that there is that shares a vertex and array. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. Adjacent. They are adjacent. All right. So whenever you see adjacent, this is when you're going to use angle addition. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead, just to make our life easier, I'm going to go ahead and name this whole angle 9, okay? Just going to name the whole thing 9. <laughs> so, that angle 1 plus angle 8 equals angle 9, okay? <laughs> All right? So, but when I use angle addition, you got to make sure you're adding up the angles, the parts, to make the whole, okay? All right. So let's look at this next little figure. What can I assume? What do you see, physically see? Uh, four, four dots. Yeah, I can say supplementary. Okay. Yeah. Or I can say linear pair. All right, so angle XUW plus angle W. Equals 180. Yep. All right. Keep this. We'll finish this on Monday. Okay. Finish on Monday. <laughs>